MOBB Around the World is powered by Asus ROG. The ROG phone is the official gaming phone of MSC 2024. On the road to the biggest event in our esports just yet, I bet you guys are wondering, what's MOBB like around the world? In this episode, we're going to go ahead and take a trip down to the mecca of MOBB, where arguably it all started. We're checking out MPL Indonesia, and we're going to be hearing from one of the folks who called that grand finals match between Fnatic Onyx and Evos Glory, MPL ID's very own Eterna. Let me hear, yo, for Eterna. <laughs> Don't do me dirty like that. What the heck? If you know, you know. How are you doing, Eterna? How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Getting like reacquainted with all these teams, especially now that we're all like preparing for MSC, which is in a week, I think. From recording, Oops. give or take, yeah. Uh, that's why we're going to need your help here. Uh, we want to get to know Evos Glory and Fnatic Onyx just a little better. Uh, and maybe we might get some insider info on some things that we might have missed on while watching those matches and while watching Season 13. So, to start, for our friends watching, can you describe what the MPL ID playstyle is like? I would generally say it's a little bit more chaotic. Especially if you're comparing to a region like your region, right? The Philippines, they're very systematic, very low kill, very macro centric, very objective heavy. Meanwhile, for Indo, I mean, it's gotten a little bit better, I would say, right? Because in the past, it was very chaotic. It was a little similar to MPL MY. We like our brawls, we like our fights, we love our team fights, we love our high kills on the scoreboard. But I think losing after several different occasions on the international scene especially a lot of these teams have started to go for a different i would say perspective on how they would play the game so they're a little bit more focused on objectives a little more macro heavy but of course not to the finesse that the philippines are currently at right now uh it's hard to talk about the mpl id play style and what's been happening in recent years without mentioning imports uh you've been with mpl id for a few years now few seasons handful uh in the effort of not revealing your age we will not say when you started but <laughs> i want to talk about that uh, since you came in and watching the the progress and the growth of your league has it changed a lot since the advent of imports through the years i would say definitely definitely like the comings of the filipinos coming through again like the burmese i don't exactly see that much of an impact from the Burmese because I mean it wasn't that long I think it was just a season two season Naomi stops through, yeah and then he left after that so I think more so with the Philippines because it comes back to your earlier question about how Indonesia's playstyle is currently at right now and I would really say with the change with the macro centric style that that actually came from the Philippines because at the end of the day I think a lot of Indonesians have found pride in themselves with their micro level, but that macro level just severely lacked. And with the comings of Boloiski, with the comings of uh, Coach Yeb, there are a lot of things that have completely changed, especially with the macro level of these teams. One of the teams that at the start of Season 13 struggled with working on their macro and just their overall success was Evo's Glory. Nobody expected yeah. Evo's Glory to make it out of even the regular season and to go that far into the playoffs making their way into MSC punching their ticket for Riyadh how did they do that like what's the story here the biggest question I think everyone is wondering I think one of the biggest changes was their lineup right because everyone would think that coming into I think it was week number four or week number three. That's half, I'd, that's, I'd have to take a look at it a little bit more specifically. But yeah, that, that's approaching the halfway point. Exactly, right? To change your roster that late into the season, people would, would be, people were like, what the hell are you guys doing? It's, it's uncanny, right? Because usually we'd see maybe one or two changes into the roster, but this was like the entire roster that they flipped from the EVO's holy lineup that they incorporated into EVO's glory. Initially, it didn't work out, but as soon as they changed their gold laner, as soon as they put a veteran in the roster, right? They put in brands in the roster as the gold laner. That's when things started to look very great for EVO's glory. A lot of people are saying that they're on their anime arc, right? From zero to hero. And like the joke, the running joke is it's not even zero to hero, it's minus to hero. Because I think in 
I'll have to double check. But week two, day number three, they were at minus seven standings in the points. But in the match loses, they were at zero four. So they had to climb through that minus uh, situation. And then they were able to make it as the second, the first runner-ups of MPL ID. And I don't think anyone expected that from happening. So we have our, we had a Cinderella story from Geek Fam, I think last season. But this season we have our entire anime arc. And it's not like Evo's Glory is a stranger to the world stage, right? It, at the very same spot last year, they were at Embassy 2023. So some would argue this is destiny. Some would argue that maybe we three, week four, when they made that swap, they knew what they were doing. It was a calculated risk. And we're all happy to see them here because again, who doesn't love a Cinderella story? I'm here for it. You mentioned brands. Are there any other star players that we should watch out for uh, come Evo's glory? I think from the start of the season, a lot of people have hi uh, highlighted Gugun, right, from Aura as like the rookie of the season. But coming into the final stages of the weeks, final stages of the regular season and coming into the playoffs, a lot of people have actually highlighted Anavel, right? I mean, he's a new kid, his debut season as well, uh, very young as a player, but he's been showing big promise. I think a little similar to Super Ken. His hero pool is whack, by the way. It's whack. Um, super whack. He can play the utilities. He can play the assassins. He can also play heroes like uh, one of his signatures were, was the alpha this season. I don't think anyone has picked it up for MPL ID this season. So that was a big shock to uh, MPL ID season 13. And he's been very, very consistent, right? With the entire playstyle that he's going for. Either when he's more focused on objectives, he always is able to get these retries down. If he's a little bit more aggressive with his playstyle, he can go in for the picks as well. Very rarely do we see a mistake from Annabelle. And it's a big question. Like, how can a rookie, how can a young player like this have that mentality to go up against Fnatic on it, go up against all these big tier teams like Bigatron Alpha? And yeah, other than Annabelle, I would say Clockon. Yeah. Clockon has also been very consistent in the mid laner. One of the biggest anchors to the team. I think one of the highlights of Evo's glory this season is not just their gold laner, which is something that we were so accustomed to seeing, right? Uh, it was always a 4 1 in the early stage. They always wanted to farm and give it as much space for brands to get to this power spec so we can carry the game. But as time progressed, as the change in the roster happened, they were a little bit more focused on that mid trio. The material that has been really strong, the anchor, especially with Dreams as well as their roamer. I love it. Uh, the way it sounds, Evo's Glory has figured out a good mix of new bloods and veterans to hold it down and make for this, again, amazing Cinderella run. So that's one of MPL Indonesia's representatives at MSC, at the EWC. Let's talk about the defending champions. How about some <laughs> fanatic Onik? They look shaky all throughout the regular season and then suddenly it's like my turn it's game time right they, they, they sit down properly when they play and the playoff stage looked like a totally different beast what's up with Fnatic Onyx how different are they from their MSC winning form in 2023 how different are they in later 2023 when they lost in the grand finals from M5 and now what's up with Fnatic Onyx people would argue that Fnatic Onyx wasn't one of the biggest contenders to win this season, especially before playoffs, all right? And I kept on arguing otherwise, right? Every season, every week in the regular season, people are saying like, yeah, Fnatic Onyx looking shaky. I think Bigatron Alpha will pick up the uh, championship, the trophy, and so on and so forth. But I was like, nah. <laughs> These people, they're just experimenting. And it became true, right? In the playoffs, they were a lot more serious with their drafts. Um, they finally figured out their best combination. I think they swapped out Boots as well in the EXP lane for Lutpi, a rookie as well, by the way. Stepping into the shoes of Boots, that was big pressure for him, but he was able to pull through, come through, and actually become a level with all the rest of the members who had that much more experience under their belt. Um, yeah, I, I just think the regular season, it was just full of experiments, right? They tried the, I think it came from the Philippines, right? The double fighter, uh, the fighter in the gold lane. Yeah, the 1-3-1. One, one. They tried that, mm -hmm. they tried that and it didn't work. Um, they tried it again and then it didn't work again. But 
there was just a lot of things that they experimented with in the regular season and it's kind of great right because they're looking for that formula they're looking to hold most of their cards in order for all these other teams to not have a to have too much information on them right because i think they've been so strong at MPLID but as soon as they touched the international stage a lot of people had too much info because of how how would you say template or default they played their yep. strategies and it was super read out by teams like AP Brand and yeah just hopefully right hopefully with these um, things that they've done this season that they finally found that formula more adjustments more strategies that they can come up with to finally defend and properly defend here at MSC because a lot of these teams are taking this seriously right it's like one of the i think it's the largest championship that we've had so far in MLBB so yeah it's it's an esports sure reset you know, it, seriously too yeah it, it's it's a re how do you say it's a reboot in our esports roadmap right you you rebrand the uh, MSC and then you start it off with a big prize pool and then you make it part of the EWC i think it, it's huge Exactly. Right? It, it's that's why Life it's changing. that's why it's important that all of these teams put their best foot forward. And and you're right. I think Fnatic Onyx needed that experimental phase. They needed to learn about themselves all over again. And yeah. I'll be honest with you, I was I was along with those people. I, I there was a good voice in me saying, yeah, maybe maybe Onyx takes a dip for MSC and then comes back M6, but. As soon as they started to replace Boots, I'm like, yo, they mean business. I'll be honest with you, I felt a little uneasy replacing one of the anchors for, for the team for so long. And now they have Lutpi. I, am, I, am I correct to say that Lutpi was one of the more important players uh, making their way uh, throughout the later half of the season? And then even maybe through the playoffs? Because maybe if, if they stayed to that old format, the rest of the league would have read them through. It's, it's a big possibility. It's a big possibility. And it's, it's, this is like something that I've thought about for Onyx. Like, I don't know if it's true or not. I mean, I'm not an analyst, but I thought earlier on that one of the biggest, weakest links of Onyx is Boots and CW. That's what I felt. The side lanes. Because I think Boots peaked season eight. That was his peak. And then he, he just was, stayed consistent, like just. Yeah. Meanwhile, all the rest of the members, and not just from Onik, but all the rest of the players in the entire world, they exactly. have improved. Meanwhile, it felt like Boots peaked. So, one of the weakest links, I think, was Boots at the time. And then they solved that with um, Lutpi coming through. And then the next weakest link, in my opinion, especially in the international stage, was CW. And I think that's why they had Albert, right? To kind of nudge CW in that gold lane. Like, hey, if you don't improve, if you don't step up, we can still replace you, right? We still have Albert. And that's why Albert was utilized here and there. It didn't work out for them at the end. But with that, for some reason, somehow, CW himself found his own anime arc, right? There were so many times when there were um, awardings, right? And everybody from Onik would get first team. So we had the jungler Kyrie, uh, mid laner Sans, of and course. the gold laner was not CW. Last season, it was Chidera. This season, same thing. It wasn't CW again, it was Skylar. And the fact that he was able to improve that much through the regular season, up into the playoffs, and get MVP in the grand finals was tearjerker, yeah. honestly, right? It, it so, feels like it's a matter of hunger too. Uh, the hunger in Lutpi to prove himself, the hunger in CW to, to prove that he belongs on this lineup, that yeah. I, I, am still, I am still the gold laner for Fnatic Onik. Maybe that's one of the major things that Fnatic Onik have shaken up, making them all the more ready for their title defense. Talking about MSC, right? Talking about the landscape of that tournament, we did the group draw about a few days removed from this recording. And talking about EVOS Glory first, looking at Group A, they're paired up with Fireflux Esports, NIP Flash, and RRQ Akira. Any of these teams look like a major threat to EVOS Glory? Or do you feel like they're, you know a shoe-in for the knockouts? I mean, as a general rule, I think teams that are able to take control of that early and mid-game, and as well as being and having the knowledge and discipline to close it as fast as they can, will be a big threat to EVOS. 
because most of the wins that EVOS have had, despite them kind of losing control in the early game, are against teams that find themselves lost as they try and close the game. And I think that's where EVOS Glory really find their comfort and find their jam. They're really good at being patient and persistent, despite them being at a huge gold lead deficit. They're able to come through by capitalizing over the overconfidence of these teams. So if Fireflux, if Nipflash, and if RQ Akira have that discipline, they have that macro play, they have that knowledge, I think it will be a big threat to EVO's glory if they want to make it through the group stage. All right, so watch out for that even when we're behind, we know how to get you kind of sweet yeah. mentality. Okay, so that's group A. For Fnatic Onyx, I'm going to change the question just a wee bit since they are the defending champions. Overall, of the 16, 15 for now, because we don't know who comes through the wild card, of the 15 teams, uh, 14, not counting them, of course, unless they are the biggest threat to themselves, who among these teams do you think is the biggest threat to knocking Fnatic Onyx out of their throne, stealing away the title of MSE this year. Who is it gonna think? Who do you think it's gonna be? I honestly, I honestly don't have a hot take about this, Leo. I think it's on everybody's minds right now. I think Falcon's AP Bren is the biggest threat. Them? Not not, not not even Liquid Echo. I think a Falcon's AP Bren. Okay. All right. No hot takes here. No. <laughs> Maybe the fact that you're not giving us much on that and just leaving it at that is the hot take, but we're <laughs> gonna cut to the brass tacks here. No BS predictions. How far do you think Evo's Glory is gonna go? Give me a number. How far do you think Fnatic On is gonna go? Just, just knowing what we know now. I think the best motivation for Evo's Glory is absolutely no support, <laughs> right? Like they, nobody em. predicted just, them. Just doubt them. Just doubt them, right? I think that's their biggest motivator at this point. So I don't think Evil's Glory are gonna go far. Like, <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> yeah. For a fanatic on it, let's hope grand finals. Conservative. We'll start there. Yeah. All right. Good to hear, ladies and gentlemen. That has been MOBB around the world talking about MPL Indonesia's representatives, Evil's Glory, and Fanatic Onic. Care of Eterna. Bet you guys are gonna see her soon. Thank you so much, Eterna. Salamat. No, wait. I haven't been to Indonesia in a while. Terima kasih. Makau hijau. No, this is where you say sama-sama. <laughs> my, my shirt is hijau, but no. How far do you guys think Evo's Glory and Fnatic Onik are going to be going into MSC 2024? Will the Indonesians defend their MSC title or are we going to see an upset? Let us know in the comments below. Right now might be the best time to upgrade your gear. Check out Cool for School. Get your hands on back to school bundles with discounts and freebies featuring phones, laptops, and more for work and play. I'd go for the RG Phone 6, 7, and 8, each bundle with GAN chargers, gaming earbuds, and AeroActive coolers. And as a bonus, I suggest you check out the ROG Ally Z1, which comes with a 2000 peso discount, ROG Cetra True Wireless Buds, 2,000 pesos Steam credits, and three months worth of Xbox Game Pass. That's cool for school, running until August 15, 2024. Check out the HROG official Facebook page for more details. Have you heard from Yaoi recently? He's a bit sad. Sad? He's not going... Okay, number one, he's not going anywhere, right? Because you, you don't get branded as liquid and then go anywhere. I hope. But I mean, I think more so because like he thought he'd kind of like meet Liquid Echo in, you know, MSC. Right, right. And I think a lot of us were hoping for that too. What, what else did he tell you? He likes Nasi Padang. I think that's one of the other things he's mentioned. Big fan of Nasi Padang. Does he miss Filipino? Does he, does he miss being home? I haven't seen him in a while. I think he is home. Because like he mentioned to me that he was on a flight back to the Philippines. And he, he did? Yeah. 